Hey there, I hope you've been keeping well. Uh, I've had a pretty good time since our last video. Things are going well, uh, everything's going on track. People must wonder, why the lion diet? It's pretty extreme. Beef, salt, water, and that's it. So it's a pretty straightforward reason. Um, as I touched on before, it's because I feel good when I eat this way. That's really what it all comes down to. I've never done any other way of eating that's made me feel this good. Um, short of doing a vegan diet, which I just did to an experiment with a few years ago, which I'll get into. So a bit about my history with food. Now, I've always had a pretty unhealthy relationship with food. Um, I've always eaten to get full. It's a major problem. Um, on top of a sugar addiction, of course. That was probably the worst thing, eating to get full all the time. I remember watching my dad eat when I was just a little guy. And my dad wasn't a big guy at all. But boy, he wouldn't eat all day. And then he'd come home from work and beat everyone. Every time we took soup out, first one done soup. And I remember when I was a little guy, I just wanted to, I, was like, I want to see if I can eat as fast as him. Without realizing, I was learning these bad eating habits. So I just wasn't chewing my food properly. I was always racing through my meals. Uh, I learned probably from around the time I was 10 or so, I started putting on weight, 10 or 11. Uh, my diet clearly played a big factor in that. But I think there was more to it. I, I, I was an active enough kid at that age. I just was out eating my needs, I think. So what I was, what I needed to get by day to day. And you know, I had a big appetite, had a real sweet tooth, loved pop, I used to love having pop. And um, by the time I was 16 and I started exercising with weights, I, lost over 150 pounds. I went from just a fat kid to a very athletic kid. And the interesting thing about that was I did it with a crappy diet. I still had lots of junk food. I still, if I had pizza, I ate till I got full. Anything I ate, pasta, mashed potatoes, you name it, I ate till I got full. Um, and I did it the whole time just out exercising a bad diet. So any expert who says that that's impossible, um, you know, what do they know? I, you know I've, I've lived that. And so I always get frustrated when I hear experts talk like that. You can't tell the exercise a bad diet. Yes, you can. And you could argue, well, I had the metabolism of a teenager. Well, not really, because I was over 350 pounds. So I didn't really have a good metabolism, did I? So it was uh, bad eating habits. I wasn't as active by the time I was that age. I still rode my bicycle everywhere. Uh, anywhere I needed to go, I usually walked or rode my bicycle. So I was active. I wasn't into sports, but um, it was an interesting uh, window of my life because my eating didn't change at all. I, I, I just lost all that weight. By the time I was 19, as I mentioned, I developed a thyroid problem. And I noticed by that point, certain foods would wipe me out. And I noticed I was falling asleep behind the wheel. I would just get really drowsy and then whoo, I'd have to pull over because I was worried I was actually gonna fall asleep. And so uh, I noticed how much diet was impacting my, my energy levels. I started noticing different foods having a different effect and I got into a macrobiotic diet. This really seemed to be an interesting way of eating and it managed it. It really helped my energy levels. And it wasn't until I was about 23 when I was in college. And I remember having, uh, it was like a triple chocolate brownie after an exam one day. And I remember having a sensation as I ate it. And I put it in my mouth and I was like, oh, and I calmed down. And I was just mellowed. And I thought, man, that's what smokers do after they've had their cigarette. I have a bad relationship with food. And I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was a bad association. After college, I did something pretty interesting with my diet. I, I put all my nutritional training I had in college uh, together with a lot of uh, the previous exercise um, knowledge I had mixed in, mixed in with the exercise knowledge I learned in college as a massage therapist. Put it all together. I had the length of my hand to lose on my waist from my wrist to my finger that much and to get 
where one buttonhole was to where the button was on the other side of that jacket. And so I went on a really low carb diet and in eight weeks, I lost seven inches of my waist. Now, if you put your mind to it, that's interesting. You can do that with a clean diet and a good exercise regime. And that's exactly what I did. Here's the crazy part though. This was a good life lesson I learned at a pretty young age. Some people don't learn this till their 40s, 50s, or 60s. I only lost eight pounds doing it. That was a clean diet, pretty low carb. It wasn't a great diet because it wasn't high protein. It was short term, but it's not sustainable. I did that and it was pretty good, you know, like uh, until I went back to a crappy diet, as I always did. No matter how many times I tried to clean up my diet for short term goals, I always went back to a really bad diet. And through my uh, late 20s into my mid 30s, I tried all sorts of things. Now, by this point, I had gotten up to, um, I yo yoed between 300 and 360 pounds pretty consistently, on and off, on and off. I lost the same 40 or 50 pounds you know, five times over easily. So then I ended up going to see this doctor when I was in my late thirties and he was out of town about an hour's drive away. And it was a zero carb, zero sugar diet. It was also, it was a virtually a zero fat diet as well. And, but I lost 30 pounds a month doing this. It was very restricted as far as how much protein I can get and he wanted me to have more lean meats. So I was having a lot of chicken and turkey and um, I lost 165 pounds in a year. The first 150 of that was in the first five months. It's crazy, that's a person, right? But I was cold, I was hungry all the, all the time, I had low energy, I was barely getting any sleep, and I couldn't take a nap. I was exhausted and couldn't take a nap. And I lost a lot of muscle doing that. I was too weak to exercise. Now, I was losing weight and looking thinner, but I was just, in my opinion, a skinnier fat version of myself. You know, I was still overweight. I was still flabby, but I didn't lose weight and do this. I lost weight and just did this. So I lost quite a bit of muscle doing that and never got it back. Um, kept it off for the year until I started reintroducing sugar. I talked a little bit about that. And then uh, after that, once I reintroduced sugar, I couldn't manage it and I went right back up to about just under 400 pounds. So I went down to 285 and um, it was, it got good results with it in some ways, but I think it caused a lot of metabolism damage. Now, I was fighting guilt the whole time as well because I burned so much fat, it was backing up the uric acid in my blood because the body always wants to get rid of the, um, the ketones and it backs up the uric acid. So um, I was taking a lot of anti-inflammatories and these anti-inflammatories were known to cause blood clots. And by the time I was 41, I had that heart attack a week after my 41st birthday. Now, um, it was after that, not long, maybe six months after that, I tried vegetarian and vegan, and, and I just wanted to see what it was like. I know my testosterone dropped horribly. I didn't do the vegan end of it well. When I did that, I did uh, vegetarian for three months, and then vegan for another three months after that. So six months I was a vegetarian. My testosterone dropped like a brick, and I started to go into a weird, funky depression. Uh, and I eventually stopped that once it got pretty serious. Like I actually got to the point where I was getting really negative thoughts. So I decided, no, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I stopped abruptly. The benefits of the weight loss weren't outweighing how I was feeling. So if I was to do something like that again, I would have done it with higher protein. By the time I was uh, 43, 44, I came across the carnivore diet, zero carb. And that worked really well for me. I, my energy was good. I felt great um, physically. My inflammation seemed to go away. I had really good energy. But after three months, I developed kidney stones. And so ever, all the people out there who are thinking, oh, that's a very unhealthy diet. Once again, as I've discussed before, you don't need carbohydrates in your diet. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. 
we have essential fats and we need protein. Carbohydrates are bonus. Um, it's easy, quick fuel for us to metabolize. And what we don't use, we can store as fat later on. You don't normally store fat when you've been eating a lot of protein or fat. So I ended up doing that uh, for a while. I, after I got my kidney stones, I had a hard time starting with it again. I just, I was always worried about getting those kidney stones back. It was bad. I struggled with being consistent with it after that for a while. And in 2020, I was more consistent with uh, the carnivore diet. And I'd done the lion diet, um, which was just the red meat for weeks at a time, but never too long. I always felt the best when I was sticking with just red meat. So, I thought, let's, for this challenge, let's do what I know makes me feel the best. And uh, red meat is very satiating. I know when I eat red meat, I can have a whole roasted chicken for lunch, a whole roasted chicken, and I'll be full when I'm finished it. But by dinner that night, I'm hungry again. I'm not just ready to eat, I'm hungry by seven o'clock at night. If I had less volume in red meat than that chicken, I won't be hungry for a day. If people think if it's restricting, you know, you're not having this, you're not having that. I couldn't do it without bread. I couldn't do it without vegetables. But the reality is I feel so good when I eat that way. You don't miss that food. You miss it to a, a limited degree, but I can't manage sugar. And I'm going to get into this in another video. That's, that's the reality of it. Ever since I saw that doctor in Toronto and I realized I had a sugar addiction problem, and that was the whole point of seeing this doctor, I realized I can't man manage it. And I tried for six years afterwards, even had a heart attack, and I still couldn't manage it afterwards. It's easier for me to abstain from sugar tenfold than it is to try and manage just a little bit my diet. So we'll get into more of the sugar addiction probably by the next video. But that's my experience with different diets, different ways of eating. Um, some things helped short term, some different ways uh, of eating helped you feel good at the time, but they were difficult to sustain. I used to do a bodybuilder's diet for a while, six, uh, like three snacks and three meals a day. It was really good, best results. Um, I always noticed really good results um, with my weightlifting when I ate that way, but it's a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of food prep and it's exhausting to tell you the truth. And if you miss a meal, you forgot to bring your lunch with you, you're sort of screwed because then it messes with your blood sugar. It keeps you even keel throughout the day. But, um, and this is a lot of what I did in my 30s as far as my eating went. It keeps you even keel throughout the day, but the minute you miss one of those meals or you go three hours instead of two or two and a half hours without a snack, you get hangry. And, you know, that's not something I would enjoy. And so carnivore, just makes me feel good. I'm, the energy levels very sustained all through the day. You become fat adapted. So the lion diet frees me up. It gives me more freedom because I feel better. My energy is good. Um, even when I have lamb, I feel even better than if I just have red meat. I noticed that I had lamb two days straight about a week ago and my joints felt like I was doing intermittent fasting. I've, nothing makes me feel better than when I intermittent fast. And the nice thing about intermittent fasting is I can do that at, with almost any way of eating, except for what I'm trying to do now, because I don't want to go large windows of time without fueling my body. So the interesting thing about intermittent fasting when I did that was I did it for three months um, back in 2018, 2019. And um, I did a lot of research on it. I started with 24 hour fasts and I found those pretty easy because I was already doing carnivore and it's easy to go a day without eating with on carnivore because you're so satiated. And I didn't learn until I was 41, the difference between being satiated and being full. You know, you go and have a Thanksgiving dinner or a big turkey dinner and you're going to feel wiped out afterwards. And it's not just from the chip the fan from the turkey that like everyone says it's all the sugary starchy foods you're eating there's so many vegetables mashed potatoes corn beets you name it so um that sugar is what messes you over i can eat a ton of turkey it doesn't make me tired um it just doesn't so it's it's interesting you want to uh 
do something like that, you want to make sure you've done a lot of personal research on it and educate yourself, understand it, check out testimonials of people who have done these things, including something like the lion diet. And you'll see all sorts of people that'll tell you the good and bad. And that's what you want to be prepared with. And you want to try and find people who have your similar maybe health history. Um, so when it came to the uh, intermittent fasting, the crazy thing is I went up to two day fasts and three day fasts. I, I heard the three day fast was the one that makes you feel amazing on day three. And it was true. And you get to day three and your mental clarity through the roof. My joints, I felt like I was a teenager again. It was quite fascinating. Um, my walk uh, became faster. My balance got better. Um, my joints just weren't stiff at all. And I did that up to four day fast, then five day fast, and I would break the fast for a day, go back to just carbs, or sorry, uh, carnivore, and then go back to a three or four day fast. And here's the crazy part. I did that for two months, 24 to um, uh, four day fast, 24 hour to four day fast. And I didn't lose an inch or a pound on my waist. Think about how little I ate um, in that window of time of two months, in that eight to nine weeks. I probably only ate a week and a half, maybe two weeks worth of food. And I didn't lose an inch on my waist or a pound. I should have lost one or the other. And that was when I realized a few months later, because I wasn't doing it for weight loss. I wanted to just see what it was like. And, and I realized a while later, that's weird. I didn't lose anything. I should have lost something. And I was being very strict. When I went back to eating, it was strict carnivore. Um, so it goes to show, and that was when I realized that, and that was when I realized I had some hormones that were out. And I was thinking insulin more than anything. Even though I had good blood sugar, I thought, can I still have good blood sugar and have insulin that's out? And sure enough, I did. And we can talk about that in another video. So anyway, I hope uh, this wasn't too boring for you today and I hope it was uh, informative. Um, my point is I've tried lots of different ways of eating and for me, the carnivore diet works the best. And there's no long-term results or studies done on it, but I already know the long-term results of the direction I was going in before. And there's no way that was a good direction. So um, when all my numbers on paper start getting better that my doctor is worried about blood pressure heart rate you know my waistline uh, my overall weight um, my insulin and blood sugar um, when all those numbers are good or perfect or getting dramatically better shows you're going in the right direction especially if you're feeling good doing it that's the most important thing if you're feeling good for some people vegan is what works being a vegan is what works for them all the more power to them. Do what makes you feel good. Don't rule anything out unless you've tried it safely. Do your research. But that's my opinion. Everyone's got their opinion. Mine's no better or worse than anyone else's, except for I've learned what works for me. Take care.